Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we will be adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators. We will also include a whole number. We will also show you how to arithmetically change the denominators of your fractions to a common denominator. But before we get started, we gotta get out. Charlie, he better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? <laughs> All right, let's get started right there. Now, this is the problem we left off with in the previous video. So, we had mentioned that 3 halves is equivalent to the fraction 9 6 by looking at the number line. It's in the same location on the number line. 3 halves is in the exact location as 9 6. Therefore, they are equivalent. Well, obviously, when you work with problems that have fractions, you're not going to draw all these number lines. So, how do you arithmetically calculate and show that 3 halves is equivalent to the fraction 9 6? Well, what you really do is you multiply it by 1. It's that simple. Watch. We're going to take 3 halves and we're going to multiply by 1. But we're going to write 1 in a special form. We're going to write it as 3 over 3. Remember, 3 divided by 3 is 1. Why do we choose 3 over 3? Because look at your denominator. 2 times 3. If you multiply 2 times 3, that will give you 6. But if you multiply the bottom number by 3, it looks like we have to multiply the top by 3, right? You actually do. And if you do that, you see you get 9 sixths. And we know 3 halves is equivalent to 9 sixths. So that's what you do to change the denominator of your fractions. Let's look at the 2 thirds. Remember, 2 thirds was equivalent to 4 sixths. So again, we're going to multiply 2 thirds by 1. But we're going to write 1 in a specific form to make our denominator 6. Well, in the fraction 2 thirds, our denominator is 3. And we know if we multiply 3 by 2, that'll give us 6. So we'll rewrite our 1 as 2 over 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. And on the top, 2 times 2 is 4. And that does give us 4 6. So you may be thinking, hey, this is giving us a clue on how we multiply fractions. You will soon see that when you multiply fractions, you go straight across the top and straight across the bottom. We'll get to that soon. Well, we have 5 6 that already has a denominator of 6. And now all our fractions have a denominator of 6, and we work with our numerators, and now let's perform the calculation on the number line. We go 9 6. Now we take away 4 6, which gives us 5 6, and now we'll add 5 6, and that will give us 10 6. That's what we got last time. But then I had mentioned, look at, at the number lines, 10 6 is equivalent to 5 thirds. And I mentioned that was reducing. Well, when we multiply top and bottom of our fractions by the same number, we change, for instance, 3 halves to 9 6. But now, how do we change 10 6 to 5 thirds? We're not going to multiply, we're going to divide. You may notice that 10 and 6 have a common factor of 2. 10 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So if we divide both top and bottom by 2, notice we get 5 thirds. And we know 10 6 is equivalent to 5 thirds because 10 6 and 5 thirds have the exact same location on the number line. And this is called reducing. We'll do more reducing later on. All right, now let's try this problem. 4 thirds subtract 1 half plus 2. Now, 4 thirds, let's change it to have a denominator of 6. 4 thirds is equivalent to 8 6. And so let's multiply 4 thirds by 1. But what form of 1 do we use? In this case, we use 2 over 2 because 3 times 2 is 6, and that's what we want in the denominator. 4 times 2 is 8, and so we get 8 6. It's equivalent. Let's go to 1 half. 1 half is equivalent to 3 6. So notice, we're going to multiply 1 half times 1, but we're going to rewrite the 1 as 3 over 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 times 3 is 3. And that gives us 1 half is equal to 3 6. They're equivalent. Well, now we have this number 2. Look at our number line here. 2 is equivalent to 4 halves. It's also equivalent to 6 thirds because 6 divided by 3 is 2. It's also equivalent to 12 6 because 12 divided by 6 is 2. And because we're working with a common denominator of 6, we're going to rewrite the 2 as 12 6. Now, I'm sure you're asking, and he's going to ask, 
How did you know to use a common denominator of six? Yeah. We're going to get to that in our next video, okay? I'll just give you a brief introduction. In this problem, we were given fractions that have a denominator of three and two. So really, that lowest common denominator is the smallest number that a three and a two divide evenly into. Both three and two divide evenly into six. That's how I knew the common denominator was six. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. Anyway, let's finish this problem here. We have all our denominators the same. Remember, the denominator remains unchanged. Now we work with our numerators, and let's perform the calculation on the number line. Let's go to 8, 6. Subtract 3, 6, plus 12, 6. And that gives us 17, 6. And that's our final answer. That completes part 3. I hope you come back for part 4. We'll see you again soon.